Let us pray. Eternal God, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, unite us as we worship you here with all who in far off places are lifting up their hands and hearts to you that your church throughout the world with the church in heaven may offer up one sacrifice of thanksgiving the sacrifice of praise to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who died on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins and for the gift of eternal life we pray this to the honor and glory of your name, O God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in and through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. procession is hymn number 732, Jesus where thy people meet.
the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth stand in awe of him. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed Lord and Father, we have assembled in your name and in fellowship with one another. Enable us by your grace to offer the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, to proclaim and respond to your word. Teach us to pray for your word and your church. Grant that we confessing our sins be worthy of to you our souls and bodies and the living sacrifice. In this holy sacrament. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires are open, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ. Be with you. Let us pray. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name, increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and bring forth in us the fruit of good works through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever.
A reading from the book of Exodus, chapter 3, verses 1 to 15. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses, and he said, Here I am. Then he said, Come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said, For the place, he said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has now come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppress them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He said, I will be with you, and this shall be the sign for you that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, If I come to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever and this my title for all generations. The word of the Lord. The psalm appointed for this morning service is Psalm 105 found on page 605, verses 1 to 6, and 23 to 26. We'll read alternate verses. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Remember the marvels he has done, his wonders, and the judgments of his mouth.
Israel came into Egypt and Jacob became a sojourner in the land of Ham. Whose heart he turned so that they hated his people and dealt unjustly with his servants. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans, chapter 12, beginning at verse 9. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints, extend hospitality to strangers, bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another, do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly, do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The word of the Lord. The gradual hymn is hymn number 397, Lord thy word abideth.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to Christ our Savior. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and, to bega and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord. This must never happen to you. But he turned back and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who would want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father. And then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The Gospel of Christ. Praise. I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. At our 2023 annual synod, that is our synod for this year, the Bishop of Kingston gave an insightful sermon entitled, Religion in the Public Square. Utilizing that title, I would like us to examine what we mean by religion, bearing in mind that we are all religious practitioners. Every single human being is a religious practitioner. And so it's therefore important to know what is good religion versus bad religion. To expound further on the fact that we are all religious, religious practitioners. That is so because every one of us are all worshipers. We all worship someone. Or as I like to say, it's just simply a matter of who or what we will worship. Because the reality of life is something or someone is going to take priority in your heart. And the thing that or person that takes priority in your heart is the thing that you worship. Therefore, in that context, we challenge ourselves every Sunday that we come here to worship God in and through Jesus Christ. And the reason why we do that, as I said last week, is because of the special qualities that Jesus carries. 
Jesus, as I described the last time I was here, is a bridge builder. He is the one who makes the union between God and ourselves possible. And in addition to that, Jesus shows God to us in a particular light. And with that, with that light, we are called, therefore, to worship God in a particular manner. So that leads me to the question of what is that light? But let me pause here because the teacher in me wants to make sure that you're journeying with me. So this morning, for our reflection, we are basing our reflection on the fact that all of us are religious practitioners. And in that context, I want us at the back of our mind to have this question that it is important to know what is good religion versus bad religion. And it's important for us to know that because we are all religious practitioners. And we are all religious practitioners because we are all W-O-R-S-H-I-P-P-E-R-S. -P -P -E what does that spell? And it's just simply a matter of who or even what we will worship. And every Sunday we come challenging ourselves to worship God in and through Jesus Christ. We have been tempted during the week to worship other things for a variety of reasons. But every time we come to church on a Sunday morning, the liturgy challenges us to, to focus on God through Jesus Christ as the center of our hearts. To let that be whom we worship. And Jesus deserves pride of place in our hearts as the object of our worship contrary to what the world may tell us, because as we described the last time I was here, as I said, that Jesus has certain important characteristics. Jesus is a bridge builder. He makes it possible for there to be union between God and ourselves. And in addition to that, Jesus shows us God in a particular light. And in that light, we are called to be worshippers of God. So let me get back to the script. What is that light that Jesus has revealed? And why is that light important? Well, I want us to appreciate this. We take on the characteristics of the person or the thing that we worship or idolize. Did you know that? We take on the thing, the qualities of the thing or the person that we idolize. So if what you idolize is a cold, inanimate object like cash, then eventually, over time, that's what you become. Cold and heartless. If you idolize a person who is shallow and is only concerned about climbing over people to get to where they want, believe it or not, over time, that's what you become. Maybe I'm straying here, but it's always interesting to hear people who put their politicians on a certain stand. And over time, it's like they are the politician, or even more than the politician themselves. Over time, you become what you idolize. It's against this background, therefore, that Christianity offers an advantage. Yes, we are people of the book. Because like our Abrahamic cousins, 
which are Jews and Muslims, we have like them a religious writing, a scripture. We call ours the Bible. But in addition to that, we have something more. The more that we have is that the essence of God has been revealed in human flesh and his name is J-E-S-U-S. -E and who is that? And Jesus is the Christ in Greek, the Anointed One, or the Messiah in Hebrew. And this Jesus shows us certain characteristics of God. And these characteristics of God are further refined by the Apostle Paul in his description of Christ and by extension God. And that description can be found in page 54 of our Book of Common Prayer. So I invite us to turn to page 54 of our Book of Common Prayer. Found it, page 54, in our Book of Common Prayer. It's the canticle, the song of Christ's glory. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 through to 11. And I'd like us to read it together, if possible. Christ Jesus was in the form of God. But he did not cling to equality with God. He emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, and was born in the likeness of men. That passage reveals to us the nature of the God we worship. That passage reveals to us the nature of the God we worship. And we could spend another sermon describing that. And in fact, there are other occasions in the church's year where we do that. And I'll just speak to that shortly. But that passage describes for us the nature of the God we worship. And, and in essence, the nature of the God we worship is a God who is prepared to be one of us and to die for us so that we may live. That God is one who is prepared to become one of us. And if that wasn't enough, is prepared to die so that we may live. And remember what I said earlier, that we ought to take on the characteristics of the nature of the one who is number one in our hearts. So what is that saying to us? That should describe us. People who are prepared to associate with others and even to the extent of doing what it takes so they may live. And I, and I come back to that later. But this passage is so important that it is repeated at two important points of our calendar and liturgical year. This lesson is the lesson 
that is read on New Year's Eve or New Year's Day, the Feast of the Holy Day. Now that, does, that gives you, that tells you something, doesn't it? Because when you're starting a year, you're starting a year afresh with certain resol finish the word, resolutions. And the church says that one of the resolutions that we are going to make for ourselves is that we are going to remind ourselves of the God whom we worship and that we ought to take on the qualities of the God we worship in our life for 2023, 2024, whatever the year may be. And the nature of this God that we worship is that this God does not look down on people, but he associates with the Lord. And in addition to that, is prepared to do whatever it takes so that people's lives may be better. Every year, that ought to be our New Year resolution. And the second time that we meet this passage, again, it's in an important place in our liturgical year. And it's on the Sunday of the Passion called Palm Sunday. And it's ideally placed there because Passion Sunday is the essence of the God we worship. It's at the essence of the God we worship. So you can appreciate, therefore, that this passage is important to us because it describes who God is. And another way of describing who God is, is and how God loves the world is by saying that he gave up his only begotten son so that but doesn't sound like you know it. For God so loved the world that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting. So, St. Matthews, you come again this Sunday morning. Do you understand the nature of the God we are worshiping in and through Jesus Christ? Yes or no? Yes or no? Do you understand the implications that it has for you? Yes or no? And if in case you forgot, the gospel lesson for today reinforces it because the gospel lesson for today starts off by Jesus telling his disciples, who are you and, and I? He starts off by telling us that what is going to happen to him. He says, and I quote, I must go to Jerusalem. And there the nation's leaders, the chief priests and the teachers of the law, of Moses will make me suffer terribly. I will be killed, but three days later, I will rise to life again. So Jesus today reinforces us to us what type of worshipers of God we are called to be and what will be our ultimate outcome. Of course, it goes without saying, that this was not well received by the hearers of Jesus because their understanding of God is definitely not a crucified Messiah. Indeed, for many persons, to even today, their perception of religion does not involve suffering. Their perception of religion is more about prosperity and power. But the New Testament especially the Gospel of John, does not proclaim that this is a type of religion and the nature of God that we should possess. Indeed, in speaking of what Christ Jesus has revealed about God and by extension religion, John places on the lips of Jesus the following statement in John 15 verse 30. Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for one's friends. That's who we are. And, and why is that who we are? 
because that's who God is through Jesus Christ. And we take on the nature of the one we worship. So in doing so, we fulfill the great commandment, love God with everything and above everything, and to love our neighbor as ourselves. So the hallmark of the Christian religion, as it should be practiced, is love that gives rise to hope. And today's lesson speaks to that. Today's second lesson, I should say, gives us some practical examples of how that love should take place. If you were listening, you would hear. So let me remind you of some of it. It says, be sincere in your love for others. Hate everything that is evil and hold tight to everything that is good. Love each other as brothers and sisters. And honor others more than you do yourselves. Take care of God's needy people. And welcome strangers into your home. Ask God to bless everyone who mistreats you. Ask him to bless them and not to curse them. Question, don't you hear Jesus in that? Don't you hear Jesus in that? Isn't that the way Jesus lived? When they nailed him on the cross and saying all manner of things to him and about him, what was his response? Father, forgive them, for they know not what they And I want to suggest that this is what people are to experience of us. This is the religion that we should put into the public square. Earlier, I raised the question, is there good religion and bad religion? I leave you to decide. But I will close by sharing a description of how Christians were seen in the second century. And that description of how they were seen helped Christianity to go. And here it is. Christians are passing their days on earth but are citizens of heaven. They obey the appointed laws and go beyond the laws in their own lives. They love everyone, but are persecuted by all. They are unknown and condemned. They are put to death and yet gain life. They are poor and yet make many rich. They are short of everything, and yet have plenty of all things. They are dishonored, and yet gain glory through dishonor. That's hard to do, and that is why the prayer for today is what it is. And so I just repeat it for us. Proper 17. Lord of all power, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name. In other words, enable us to worship you. Increase in us true religion. Nourish us with all goodness and bring forth in us the fruit of good works through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever. Amen. In the name of God
Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. to page 104 in our Book of Common Prayer as we affirm our faith in God and say together the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally the God from the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten from the one indeed with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified and conscious died. He suffered and died in his grave. On the third day, he rose again. He fulfilled it of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God. He will come again in glory to the church and the living man. And is seated on the right hand of God. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord of the Holy Spirit, who proceeds from the Father, to the Father and the Son of God, and the worship of the Lord. He has spoken to us. We believe in one holy Catholic and one star of the church. We have found a new one baptism. The Lord be with you. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. For the session this morning, we'll be guided by Form F on page 115. Let us pray for the church and for all people according to their needs. Lord, in your love, bless and inspire all clergy, especially our, our Archbishop, Leon and Garth, our bishops, Michael and Craig, our priests. Guide and protect all heads of state and all who bear rule, especially those in this land. Patrick, our Governor General, Andrew, Prime Minister, Mark, Leader of the Parliamentary Opposition, all members of Parliament, and all persons serving in local government. Direct those who administer justice and strengthen those who guard and protect the land. Reveal the common goal to those in public trust of authority and decision makers in industry and commerce. Enlighten by your spirit all places of education and learning and especially we pray for those who are returning to school. Comfort and heal all persons who are in any trouble, sorrow, need, or sickness, or any adversity. Especially we pray for Carmen Reed, Conroy Cooper, Ruth Creighton, Ruby Smith McFarlane, Claudette Boris, Jermaine Walker, Rubilyn Taylor, Jacqueline Ricketts, Clive Nicholas, Velma Purchase, Ruby Steele, Irene Green, Richard Williams, Elonia Gordon, Jacinth Watson, Phyllis Levine, Gladys Ramsey, Andrew Lane, 
and the vino roll. Remember our brothers and sisters who have died in the faith. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the witness of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, for the Holy Patriarch, Prophets, Apostles, and Martyrs, and for the saints who have been good examples in their several generations. And finally, let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Accept our prayers and intercessions, Father, according to your wisdom, for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us therefore confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness. And keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Form C. The kingdom of God is justice, peace, and joy inspired by the Holy Spirit. Peace of the Lord be always with you. The Lord be with you. The offer to him is hymn number 630. Who are we to stand and sing?
singing of the theme song, we'll have the walk-up collection for I'm Building a People Song. Hymn number 843. Brothers and sisters, good morning. Warm welcome to all persons visiting with us this morning, and especially to Father Canon Michael Allen. And sir, we thank you for being here with us as our celebrant and preacher this morning. I also take this op opportunity on behalf of the congregation to welcome back our choir director, Mr. Quincy Etinoff. <laughs> Birthday greetings for this month, this week. Persons will be celebrating birthdays from the 3rd to the 9th of September. Brittany Green, Michael Koch, Roy Porter, Brandon Howlett, and Faye Goring. On September 10, 
there will be a service here for education. It will be Education Sunday, and we'll be having a special service. The Women's Auxiliary will also be having a porridge sale. September 21. What day is that? St. Matthew's Day. Yes, St. Matthew's Day. So we'll be having a big service, not on, it, on September 21st, but on September 24th. And my brothers and sisters, on September, for this year, the church has been planted here for 140 years. So it's our 140th celebration anniversary this year, and we'll be having a year-long celebration starting on the 24th of September. And as the time progresses, more information will be given to you. Um, on September 23rd, that's the Saturday, we'll be having a community outreach. So we'll be having a number of services offered to you, the members of the congregation, your friends, your relatives, and people from the community. And we will give you more information on that. Today, the Mother's Union will be having a cake sale immediately after the service. It's now back to school time, and we are having a back to school drive, and we are ha asking persons to assist us, either in cash or kind, so we can get books or money. We continue to receive donations for our outreach program on Wednesdays. Persons wishing to contribute may speak to the rector's warden. My brothers and sisters, that's it for the notices this week. Have a blessed week. The Lord be with you. The offertory, sorry, the recessional hymn, you have already done the offering. The recessional hymn is number 355, with a story to tell to the nation.
Lord be with you. Go in peace and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ.